Hey, have you heard about giants in America? Kind of giant remains. We've all heard tales, and those of us who are geeks and nerds play maybe play Dungeons and Dragons, but about legitimate stories of giants found in America. Now, I'd, I'd heard a couple stories about giant skeletons here and there, but not really a topic I had dug into a little bit. Got to admit, found some interesting stories when I took the time to actually look it up. There's a ton of information out there, and we're going to share a little bit about uh, some giants in America and some of the different lore and, and some of the different findings. From a child born into this world, we are taught what to believe. Close-minded, we become fearful to be deceived. Still, we desire to know what lies beyond that locked door. The art of the storyteller conjuring tales of legend and lore. History hidden, lost knowledge, things forgotten, and the unknown. These are the things that direct us and will set the tone. Welcome, friends, to another episode of Nightmares on the Lost Highway. One of the things when I started doing the research on this is I found a quote from Abraham Lincoln. Uh, in 1848, President Abraham Lincoln visited Niagara Falls. And in his speech that he gave there, he mentions, When Columbus first sought this continent, when Christ suffered on the cross, when Moses led Israel to the Red Sea, nay, even when Adam first came to the land or the hand of his master, then as now, Niagara was roaring here. The following line really caught my attention. The eyes of the species of now extinct giants whose bones fill the mounds of America have gazed upon Niagara as ours do now. And the more I dug into this, there are just hundreds of giant remain sightings that have been reported not only here in just the United States, but to be honest, it's quite the hotbed right here, kind of in the four or five state area, Missouri, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, all those areas. Kind of going back to some of the history, I think we need to define what giants may mean to different people. Um, the Nephilim, a Hebrew term, is, is definitely mentioned when you go to, to look up giants. Uh, they mention them as offsprings of the sons of God and the daughters of men. Uh, basically meaning the Nephilim uh, could be fallen angels that have come to earth. Uh, giants were definitely uh, mentioned in the Bible. Some loosely translated, depends on translations. The sons of God have been interpreted as fallen angels in some traditional Jewish explanations. And according to Numbers 13.33, uh, they later inhabited Cana uh, in the time of the Israelite conquest. But in early 1900s here in America, there were literally hundreds of newspaper reports all across Northern America of what they are calling giant-sized humanoids. And by definition, that seems to be somewhere around the eight-foot height range and taller. Uh, yet today, no mainstream newspaper reports such finds, or even the historical accounts of just over a century ago all of these findings, uh, most of them were scooped up by the Smithsonian. Uh, I thought that was interesting. The Smithsonian Institute would come around. Uh, a lot of these people would find these mounds, uh, some considered Indian burial mounds, uh, and they would start digging in them, maybe as they're clearing a field. Early settlers, uh, maybe as they're building their houses, would come across these, not fully understanding what they were, uh, and they would find these giant remains. Um, you were spoke on the Smithsonian. There's a little bit of a conspiracy theory there that they, uh, those remains aren't there anymore. And heard that. Yeah. Like why? Why? Why is? Why are they hiding this information? <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, is there a secret basement that has all these hundreds of giant remains? But yeah, at one time it says actually uh, in several reports that I've looked at, there was eight to ten reports a year for like a hundred years. That's that's quite a lot. That's just here in in the Northern America area. Uh, some were found in caves. Uh, as I mentioned, some were found in different mounds. These mounds are, are quite typical around our area here in Missouri, uh, especially up around the St. Louis area. There's a lot of references to Indian mounds. And uh, for those of you who may not be inter or 
that familiar with it. Some of these mounds uh, generally are like 60 foot in diameter. They may be 12 foot or taller. As they have excavated some of these mounds, they would find maybe that these were some type of a housing or structure that was built. Uh, a lot of them mention slate floors or flat rocks, at the very least, that made up the entire floor. Timber structures on the inside, and uh, some mentioned like the top of the mounds would have like bark off of trees and stuff, almost like uh, shake shingles, if you will. So uh, some of the stories I found specifically said some of the mounds had specific trees planted in specific patterns. Yes, all around the mounds and different things. Um just a couple of newspaper references here that I, I thought was, was interesting. May 25th, this was in 1882, uh, happened to be in the New York Times. A giant skull was discovered along with a, uh, artifacts in the Red River Valley area. Uh, this particular mound was 60 foot in diameter and nearly 12 foot tall. Uh, they went in and started excavating this. And in the center, they uh, indeed found skeletal remains of about a dozen men and women along with several animal bones that they were planted with. And again, by definition, all of these were eight foot and taller. Some were stretching up close to nine foot. There's another sighting, uh, a re report, I should say, May 5th, 1885. A small mound was opened by a group of schoolboys. Now, this one was something more along the lines of 12, 15 foot in diameter, much smaller scale. Uh, they found by digging through the top, it dropped open, almost like to a cavern area, a vault, had a stone floor, the bark-type ceiling that I had mentioned, four huge skeletons, three being over seven foot tall, but they thought those were the women, and one male that was over eight foot tall. Uh, again, the newspaper clippings, there's just hundreds and hundreds. And that, that seems to be a little bit common in the things that I found, is there would be multiple skeletons, and maybe some of them would be significantly larger than the others. Again, maybe men, women... It, it, maybe more infants, you know, maybe yeah, not fully mature. Maybe, maybe an age difference. Uh, New York Times in um, 1897, uh, they actually had uh, some sketches done at that time. They pulled a skull out uh, that they believe was from a man that was over nine foot tall, and they mounted the skull or laid the skull next to a bushel uh, container, like what bushel of apples would be in, and the skull was larger than a container with bushel apples. The eye sockets were large enough that you could put a grown man's fist through. And this was one of the first mentions, uh, which I found several unique sightings that was brought up. Extra rows of teeth in the jaw bones. This seems to be pretty common in giant lore. I, I think it may even be referenced to in the Bible, in, in some place where giants actually have more teeth. And, you know, if we're going to tie that into a real-world example, Andre the Giant, you know, the, the famous wrestler, he had more teeth than your average man. Ah, really, really. There's a there's an example of uh, one more modern-day giant. I've actually got another one we're going to talk about here uh, later on. But it, it's kind of strange. A lot of the Indian cultures... Uh, believed in giants. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Um, if you know Native American Indians, they still actually talk about it. It is, it is in their history. It is in their lore. There is one in particular in the Wisconsin area where strange skeletons are found, and they interviewed several of the Native American Indians, and they said that in their past history, they actually spoke the tongue of the giants. They spoke of trading with the giants. They also spoke that they weren't always friendly. Uh, there was uh, one report that I read that was talking about, especially way before the white man came to America, and it was all Native Americans, that the giants and the Indians would actually battle. And there were certain areas that were declared the giant's domain, that the Indians did not hunt, they did not trespass on, and it was kind of a mutual respect. And they mentioned that after that, you know, the giants kind of kept to themselves. They honored that treaty. So obviously there was some intelligence, you know, maybe there and everything. Some were mentioned that they were buried with clay pots, very typical to uh, some Indian remains. Others uh, I thought were very interesting. There was almost like some Norse Viking aspects to copper beads and necklaces and uh, trinkets that they were buried with. Uh, some metal swords, uh, hammers were mentioned. Uh, again, it, maybe it's just me, but it kind of made me reminiscent of, of like Vikings. So that was kind of a cool tie-in, I thought. Would the, the Vikings have been significantly larger? I mean, maybe Vikings, 
you know, one of the first non-native people to make it to these shores. Maybe they got here even earlier. It, it's possible. I mean, definitely in the lore and legend, you read about Vikings in the Norse, and they always seem to be kind of towering over the yeah. the normal people. Again, you, you brought up kind of the conspiracy theory aspect, and I think that's something that uh, it's got to be talked about. I mean, if you've got <laughs> this many sightings, the Smithsonian was coming around collecting these, and at one point they published uh, an article that, that mentioned the 8 to 10 sightings per year and that they literally had documented over 300 cases. And then it was like they never did anything with this information. Uh, they were going around and collecting the remains. Uh, there was a Missouri giant that was found. They dug up the remains when a gentleman was trying to clear land for his house and found a large flat rock. It didn't actually give dimensions, but it was something that they said took like six men to move. So I'm, I'm imagining a pretty big slab. Yeah. And underneath this was right there off of his front porch, what would be his front porch, a nine foot tall giant remain. And underneath of it was possibly younger giants or women. They didn't get specific, but like seven foot tall. And uh, now that one was not buried with anything fancy. But out of respect, but almost kind of out of uh, definitely respect, but fear, he did not hand those in to the Smithsonian because already at that time, it was kind of a conspiracy theory even back then. Well, what are they doing with these? What's going to happen? So he actually moved that grave, if you will, dug a hole and put them back as much undisturbed as he could, which I, I thought was a very kind of cool tribute. Well, you know, respectful of those that come before us. It almost seems like grave robbing to, to take the bones and lock them away. Yeah, definitely. If that's what happened. If that's what happened, right, right. There was a mention here, the uh, Iroquois and Osage uh, and Huron and Omaha Indians, all tribes, all speak of the race of giants in their history, and they mention freely that they lived and roamed in the land of their forefathers. In the Indian accounts, there had been like a thousand documented accounts of giant remains, found all over North America in a 200-year period. Uh, again, a lot of references to the double rows of teeth. Uh, the jawbone, they mentioned, would fit over the finder's original skull. I mean, can you imagine? You're picking up this jawbone, and it, it's almost like a huge sock hat that you would pull over your head, and it's fitting on the outside. That's I mean, just massive. Just us sitting here talking, Game of Thrones. You know, their giants weren't gigantic and there's even a character in game of thrones that yeah has a, a giant skull as a helmet true true i forgot about that yeah well there, there was a mention in an 1873 report that the smithsonian i will put <laughs> put out actually in their report so this is not like some random newspaper ad but uh the skull that they discovered near anna illinois had a circumference of 36 inches. That's a yardstick. That is three foot. And again, this is a Smithsonian. They had collected this. This was part of their scientific study. A 36 inch circumference skull. I mean, that to me, I don't know what I would do if I'm out here trying to clear the land. I've got my family. I'm trying to build a house, you know, trying to settle this area. And, you know, you go out at night, uh, you go check on the cattle and the horses and it, you come across something like this that would still be living, absolutely terrifying. I mean, I, I don't know what I would do. Yeah, you have to imagine the days, uh, if and when these 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 giants were walking the earth encountering something like that. That's disproportional. That's huge. Absolutely. I mean, and you know, we're, we're kind of getting into some wild stuff here, but I would like to think probably with double rows of teeth, these guys aren't vegetarians. I mean, you know, uh, you're missing a cow, missing a horse. Uh, maybe that's where they're going. You know, you don't know. Again, we're based kind of here in Missouri, so I, I thought it was very interesting to try to find things that were around Missouri. And a little town called Steelville, Missouri, in 1933. Yeah, I've, I've got that one here. You've got that one? Yeah. Well, take it over. I'll let you tell me Tell me about it. Um, well, what I've got is there was a 12-year-old boy by the name of Billy Harmon. He was on the Puckett Farm on the Merrimack River near Steelville. Uh, he entered a cave. He was looking for, for Native American relics when he saw a hole in the ground. He, he saw that there was some, some white material there, and after they excavated that hole out a little bit, he found they found that it was a skeleton. Uh, the skeleton would have measured 8 feet tall. With, with what they had there. And that was one of those ones that was allegedly ferried on to the Smithsonian Institute. Yeah, I had, again. I had read that, that maybe he had retained a tooth. They had done some research, if that's the right the right story that I'm thinking of. And 
turned out that that tooth was in fact not they could attribute it to a known creature but i don't remember what the specific results were okay so kind of debunked the the point not the finding but that they had kept well, something and, and it could have been a different tooth altogether that just happened to be in the same location i'm not saying they didn't find a giant skeleton right right well and again anybody that's kind of been around this area a lot of people at least maybe not anybody because I think I got you on this one. You had never heard, or at least put together, the connection of a gentleman named Robert Pershing Wadlow. Yeah, well, yeah, Robert Wadlow. If you're familiar with the Ripley's Believe It or Not, he was, I mean, a living giant. We can, he's documented. We know he was real. Absolutely, a true living giant. He was born in 1918, uh, February 22nd, uh, and actually lived to be, um, uh, it was July 15th, 1940, when he passed away. He was known as the Alton Giant because he was from Alton, Illinois, not uh, too far north of us here. Uh, he was the tallest person in record, uh, recorded history um, of whom there's irrefutable evidence. Uh, he was born and raised right there in Alton, uh, kind of a suburb of the uh, St. Louis area, I believe. He had reached 8 foot 11 inches tall in height and weighed 439 pounds at his death. Uh, he was 22 years old, and obviously most of uh, people know that those, you mentioned Andre the Giant, some of those giants are always seem to be plagued with a lot of health issues. They generally don't seem to live a long life, but because of his uh, continued growth and his size into his adulthood, uh, he had a lot of, uh, of health issues. Uh, they attributed this to his uh, pituitary gland, uh, which uh, abnormally high levels of human growth uh, hormone was basically through his body. He did not ever use a wheelchair. However, at an early age, they did have to have some uh, braces for his legs. He was a, a living giant, as Bill said. He traveled around a lot, um, basically just meeting and greeting people, did hundreds of thousands of photographs. And again, you can find a lot of these online or in books, but to put it in perspective, I mean, this man would be standing with a group of average-sized people, adults, uh, you know, 5'11", 6 footish, and he could put his arms holding them straight out, and there would be like 10 inches of clearance before their heads would even come close to touching the underside of his arms. Just a massive, massive man. He actually had intentions and actually studied law and, and went to college and um, was, you know, very much a people person, a, a PR representative of giants, if you will. He uh, became a celebrity after, in 1936, a, a small stint he did with the Ringley Brothers Circus. Uh, but he appeared in Madison Square Garden, the Boston Garden. But he made a point to never appear in a sideshow. He did not want to be considered a a, a freak, well, if you will. They sideshows definitely have a reputation. Yeah, and, wanna... you know, as a matter of fact, he even got into it with Ringley Brothers because they wanted him to wear a top hat, which obviously would make him look taller, and tails. And, uh, you know, he basically said, I'm not having any part of that. Uh, I will travel around with uh, the carnival. But, uh, yeah, you're not telling me how to dress, and I'm not going to be portrayed uh, in that way. So you got to respect that. Yeah. But uh, early in life, like at five years old, he was already five foot six and a half inches tall at five years old. Uh, he reached six foot at eight years, uh, and seven foot at 12 years. I mean, uh, the man was just massive. I think this is one of those nightmares on the lost highway that it's irrefutable. We, we have giants. Um, we have Andre the giant. We've got, uh, this gentleman, it would stand to reason there were giants in history. Um, it is biblical. They've talked about it in the Bible several times. So I think this one is a hard one to dismiss. When we, when we originally talked about giants, of course, I stayed more local. I mean, specifically Missouri giants. And again, you, you find a lot of skeletal remains. The February 26, 1894 Waco Evening News uh, reported that uh, human remains were found in a cave in the bluffs of the Findlay Creek, a couple miles north of Ozark. Right. One of which was uh, over seven feet in length. Gigantic skull, very thick. Claimed that the bones crumbled when exposed to air. So, again, a story that you can't really verify. There was another skeleton there of what they considered ordinary size. So, again, it could be a male, female, mature, immature. Right. Uh, then, again, uh, another incident reported in the Springfield Daily News on April 25th, 1934. This would have been 40 miles north of Lake of the Ozarks. A man unearthed seven skeletons under a mound topped by five stately white oaks, in his words. Interesting uh, twist. At least one was eight foot tall. 
And in both of these cases, uh, you know, the Ozark one, these were known burial grounds of the Delaware people. And in the Oz- in the, the Lake of the Ozarks one, this was known uh, for, for the Osage. So could have been native remains, or again, I think you, you said the natives were known to associate with giants. Absolutely, several documented accounts. One that I found the most interesting, and, and you didn't find this one, I believe, was Moberly. Moberly, Missouri. Yeah, tell me about and, that one. And this is probably one of the more interesting ones that I that I, I really kind of fell down a rabbit hole with this one. Uh, reported in the New York Times on April 9th in 1885. Buried 360 feet below the city of Moberly. They discovered, uh, while excavating in a coal mine, what amounted to a, a giant city. Wow. Uh, they they kind of wondered about, they found a, a hall that was 30 feet by 100 feet with stone benches and tools. There was evidence of metal working that had been done, some statues. Sounds like the Dwarvish Mines of Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Would have, would have definitely had that vibe to it, except for on a bigger scale. A bigger scale, yes. No. Um, they were, there were bronze statues, and it seemed like it had been maybe trapped in a some sort of lava flow. As they wandered about, they found a skeleton in a courtyard, kind of, you know, a street intersection, if you will. It was lying, lying beside this fountain were portions of a human skeleton. The femur would have measured four and a half feet in length. The tibia, four foot three inches. Doing the math from that, they figure when alive, this figure would have been three times the size of your average man. I mean, roughly 18 feet tall. Holy cow. I mean, when you say giant, these would be giants. That's the definition <laughs> of a giant, yes. Uh, supposedly, the group spent about 12 hours searching in this giant city under the ground. Uh, that was about as long as their oil lamps would have lasted, and then, and then they climbed out. Now, the the interesting part about that is this is a very hard story to verify. The more I looked into it, this one is, you know, I don't want to say a hoax. I don't want to discredit anyone. The the story editor uh, or of the the editor of the Moberly Daily Monitor was a gentleman named Colonel Provines, and I may be saying that wrong. And the city editor was a gentleman by the name of Johnny Estes. These gentlemen were 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 not available for any further questions after the initial report. Ah, okay. And part of the story is is that Johnny came to the colonel there and, and told him what had been discovered, and then, without any other witnesses to corroborate his story, told the entire story to the colonel, who then reported it in the Moberly uh, Daily Monitor. Gotcha. And then from there to the, the New York Times. But, uh, again, a fast, interesting story. I had not heard that one. I can't believe I missed that one in it, my it's, research. It's interesting, but but maybe why you missed it is it's also hard to verify, and so it is is definitely falls on the, the list of that's, potential hoaxes. That's one, though, that, I mean, seriously, that would... Oh, I'd love to believe that that was absolutely factual, and maybe it was, but, I mean, well, that's man, a, a giant city? Imagine being in a coal mine, digging, punching through a wall, and finding yourself in this underground city... On a scale, you know, three times what 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 you're used to. I mean, that would uh, that literally sounds like one of our Dungeons and Dragons campaigns. That's well, pretty epic. I mean, you know, <laughs> or if you if you go back to the time, that's a uh, like Alice in Wonder, Alice in Wonderland kind of yeah, scenario. Yeah. Uh, I can understand why it's hard to believe. And again, I don't want to discredit anyone. I would love for that to be true, but I think we both agree with that one. I, I think it's 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 fairly far fetched. One of the things I, I did kind of connect with with doing the giant research, um, more often than not, uh, it didn't seem to be a single giant. There, there always seemed to be, maybe this is the wrong terminology, but a family, if you will. Um, and I don't know if that would have been like some of the Egyptians at the time. Maybe they offered people to go with the giant. So literally, hey, we're going to seal you up in here, and if you're not dead, you will be. Or if it would be more of like maybe they would build this shrine, this uh, mound, and and maybe they would just revisit it, and as as time and years would pass on, they would you know bury different bodies there, like a crypt. Um, but um, another Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin newspaper ad uh, that the New York Times reported it was uh, May fourth, nineteen twelve. Uh, again, you find that. There was a group, there were actually 18 skeletons found in this one mound. And that's that's a big mound. Um, it, it's talking about this particular mound was like maybe 30 foot in diameter, 15 foot tall. Um, again, there was some structure, almost like it was a housing, a, a, a floor, a stone floor. But they were talking about the various different skeletal remains that was found. But like the smallest was 7 foot. Uh, the largest was approaching 10 foot tall. 
Uh, they did mention that with this particular finding, it's not uh, universal with all of them, but the skulls they mention are monkey-like, uh, from like the eyes would be a sloped back forehead. Maybe maybe a more primitive. Like a Neanderthal type man is exactly kind of where I was going, what I'm envisioning. Maybe the last remnants of a of our ancestors very possible very possible and it it mentioned also the jaw bones were protruding outward again with the extra teeth uh that would kind of make sense but kind of the forehead was sloped back the jaws were protruded out so if you'd look at a side profile of the skull it was definitely more elongated uh if you will but these particular skeletons it seemed like all of those had that common trait which would make you think that you know, maybe they were out of the same family or the same clan or tribe or, or whatever the case may be. But uh, again, you could go on the internet, you can look in, in, in different books, and this is a topic that there's definitely not a shortage of reports out there. Well, even even today, I, 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 I've seen a couple of times on the internet, different postings, different forums, there's a story that... that Military forces, American military forces, encountered a living giant in, in Afghanistan. Maybe I did. Um, I think I saw some reference yeah, to that. One of our overseas theaters of war, and even if that story is a hoax, they do write about the extra rows of teeth and, and some of the more primitive features. So even if it's not real, it's, it sticks very closely to the war that we we talked about today. Well, we invite you to uh, pursue it yourself if it's something of more interest. Like I said, there's tons and tons of information, not just in uh, America, but as Bill mentioned, there's several sites overseas, which again kind of helps establish these guys were around for a while. Uh, and obviously, maybe some explorers, maybe some Viking Norse aspects, maybe not. Uh, but it seemed like they definitely got around, you know, at least to America's for our earliest history with Native Americans holding true that they uh, talked with them and communicated and traded and, and uh, had kind of mutual lines of respect uh, for boundaries. So yet just another story that you will find on Nightmares on the Lost Highway. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. I would like to thank uh, Alex Tudor, who has been helping us uh, a lot uh, with our endeavors on this podcast. You can call him our producer at this point, I think. Our producer, electronic recording technician. Uh, um, he's uh, the one that's setting up all the mics and the hardware in the background. And then Bill Weirs is going through taking his time to try to clean and edit this up and uh, give us the best possible version that we can present to you folks. want to thank everybody involved with that. Also, would like to say, if you're interested in uh, taking a listen to our local band, Phantom Sam, who has provided our uh, Nightmares on the Lost Highway theme song, if you will, uh, we will be sharing a link on our Facebook page. Uh, if you would love to go check out their unique sound, they've got some wonderful stuff going on. So we appreciate our support for us, um, and also we would appreciate support for them as well. Thank you very much.